Okay, very good afternoon to all of you. Let's start with analysis. Bull cat seven. So, how was your paper? Bull cat seven. What was about your result? What about your result? So, did you get 99.99 percentile waiting for IMS A call letter? Yes, guys. No reply from your side. Okay, let's start. I think you have taken this joke seriously. Okay, let's start with this uh, analysis. So in this entire paper, uh, 34 questions, uh, six were difficult, 24 medium, and easy were four. So if I take out the minimum attempt, minimum correct, one should get is 18. So we should get at least 18 correct out of 34 question in this bull cap mock at seven. So next question, what was your feeling about your take about bull cat seven, mock bull cat seven? So your take, was the paper average, easy, moderate? So how was the paper? Yes, guys. Harshdeep, average in terms of level of difficulty or your attempt? Average, I'm asking level of difficulty, not your performance. Level of difficulty wise, so what was your take? Average in terms of level of difficulty? Was everything so simple? Average in level of difficulty, in terms of difficulty. So what was your score, Harshdeep and Soma? I think Soma here, uh, one of my students. Yes. So uh, what was your score? So Naman has just joined the session. Hi Naman, how are you? I'm also good. So let's let's move on. I picked a few questions. I think yes, overall paper was average in comparison to other uh, six mock cats. So this was a little easy in comparison to other papers. So let's see what we have. So I picked up this first question, 56th question of this test based on para jumbling. So did you get this question correct? Yes, guys. Harshdeep, yes. Pranjal, yes. Neha has just joined the session. Hi, Neha. Good afternoon. So, in this question, um, students have marked this as difficult. The opener in this case. I think if I go by probability, generally I don't recommend this method, but if I go by probability also, then E should be an opener. There is significant divide uh, in the level of internet bandwidth. Now this has been further explained in A, the right to freedom expression may be transcend any particular technology, but this should not be restricted to uh, any particular, any particular medium is unimportant. So he is, uh, is drawing the comparison between bandwidth available to developed economy versus developing economies. So E A is a mandatory pair. After E D cannot come because there is a huge disconnect. So we cannot see immediately after E that so surely final marker. So there is huge disconnect and same goes for E and C also. Uh, huge disconnect again between E and C. Therefore rejected. So answer is option two. So let's move on to next question. A little difficult or it was difficult was it a difficult question guys yeah because uh, the uh, language itself uh, was a little difficult and uh, because uh, we can easily confuse you with something related to uh, marxist non-marxist economy and uh, wherever you talk about social sciences in general so if I just go through this, just sort of go through this question once again. Yes, uh, take your time guys. So let's ch try to check this question with the help of smartness and probability. It says that two of the options says Three option, three of the options is A is an opener and fourth says B. 
Now we are damn sure that uh, B cannot be an opener because B starts with the word second. So B is taken out. Option fourth is rejected. So answer could be your first, second and third. Answer could be your first, second and third. And fortunately we have got a mandatory pair available AB, AB, AB in all the three options. So this is also done. Now we have to check whether B, C, B, E. And we zero in on to B, C because he continues this tradition throughout his book. So A, B, C is a mandatory trio and this we find in two cho choices only. So we have zero in on to first and second. In second and third, second and third it says that four is a conclusion. So in the question, yes, uh, non-Marxist versus Marxist theory. So conclusion should be based on Marxist versus non-Marxist. So E is a good conclusion. I'm just solving just by going the keywords and something. So ABC mandatory trial guys. And E is the conclusion. Yes, now you've got this uh, correct. So let's move on to next question. So I was just telling you how to uh, go about, how to solve just by superficial reading even. So there's a purpose of this analysis that do not take everything so seriously that you are deeply engrossed while solving the question. Fifty seventh answer is one. Yes. So shall we move on to next question, guys? A little bit of probability, little bit of smartness, little bit of understanding. So it is uh, It has to be multi pronged approach always, because the corporate sector is all about profits, numbers, either by hook or crook. Always remember this mantra. Your employer would be happy only if you are able to increase the profits, sales, numbers. He is not really bothered about the degree, the college, etc. So let's move on to next question. Now I feel that this passage is uh, moderate in terms of understanding, moderate in terms of uh, question answers I would say. Now look at the structure of this paragraph. Uh, if you rem remember this paragraph guys, are you able to recall this? Uh, something to do with um, nuclear accidents and uh, something to do with randomness so take your time rush through i'll tell you the structure how to understand this and i've picked a few questions based on this take your time guys i know it's very difficult it's very easy for me to say take your time but from where we'll get the time we have got only 45 minutes. So let me tell you the structure. In uh, first paragraph, he says in March 1970, an un unanticipated chain of events occurred at a nuclear power plant in Pennsylvania. It resulted in some meltdown, failure, and somehow some things got blocked, uh, were not able to uh, perform, operate properly, and accident resulted as a result. So uh, this is about the first paragraph I just described. He has just given the two uh, uh, incidents where uh, these failures, uh, you know, the blockages, the blockage led to something. Now, second paragraph viewed separately, each of these failures was a type of considered both commonplace and acceptable. Now he's taking failures as something acceptable to us and the community. So it says that yet strung together, these failures make the plant seem as if it had been run by Keystone Cops. And so for the incident, three mile line, uh, three mile incident, many investigation lying the blame as well as very different consequences, etc., etc. The string of events spurred Yale sociologists. Now here the twist is coming up. Charles Perrot to create a new theory of accidents. And what is in complex system, we should expect minor factors which can, which we can usually ignore that too by chance and sometimes they cause major 
incidents now look at the flow again of the first paragraph he says that something minor happened and things got magnified amplified which resulted into major uh, mishap so look at the structure here first paragraph something minor happened led to something major because of magnification something one first thing led to second second to third and finally mishap occurred minor thing led to major just the just crux which is coming out in the first paragraph second also now he's pinpointing this is trying to make us believe that understand that something minor uh, if ignored or sometimes by chance we ignore we usually ignore these minor things can uh, magnify itself and uh, can uh, wreak havoc on a system am i clear guys i'm just trying to make you understand so last paragraph in his theory uh, this person recognized that modern system are made of thousands of parts including fallible human decision etc like like lepidosome it is impossible for us to track anticipate individually yet one can bet on a fact that said atom executing drunkards walk will eventually get somewhere so too will the accident eventually occur because while handling anything something will lead to definitely something called normal accident theory pere doctrine prescribe how happens how accidents can occur without clear causes and without those glaring errors incompetent villains sought by corporate government etc now from till here he is only talking about uh, errors and how they happen and what they lead to and how they can be how they, how they cannot be stopped but although normal accident theory theory of why inevitably things sometimes go wrong now uh, it said it could also be flipped around explain inevitably they sometimes go right now the twist number 2 first of all uh, everything going fine sometimes we are able to judge the minor things minor uh, you know uh, the glitches and can lead to major uh, uh, debacles and here sometimes it is sometimes things can go right even for any complex undertaking no matter how many times we fail we keep on trying uh, this is often a good chance that we will eventually succeed so now he has tried uh, to correlate this theory with economist economics an occurrence of minor factors can only lead to companies no particular edge to dominate their competitors so even keep on trying is a mantra here in the last paragraph in the real world also he says that uh, no matter what despite of failures and despite failures keep on trying that stuff sometimes uh, it is possible that we may succeed and several similar sites from enter the market together small fortuitous event fortuitous means favorable event unexpected orders chance meaning etc there there can be so many things that uh, can make any firm succeed in this cutthroat competitive world so last line which come to dominate economic activity is a determinant of individual transactions that too are too small to foresee again too small and these small random events could accumulate now can get accumulated will get accumulate and magnified and become magnified the key word here is magnified now i think we are clear about the structure a little let's move on to few questions it says that as use the last letter of the term positive feedback the positive feedback would mean so guys answer to question number 58 based on this understanding of the passage positive feedback means you are getting something positive and you again uh, give back this positive input to the system again it is magnified increased more positive output again uh, given back to fed to the system itself and this thing keeps on increasing and this is called positive feedback so do we see no neha fourth is half true chance combination of good fortune which leads to mediocrity achieving greatness so we are talking about positive feedback this could be an inference based on the passage or last paragraph we have been asked the definition of what we can make out the meaning of the positive feedback feedback should include something given as input and coming uh, at out, uh, coming out as output that to you know increased amplified or accentuated form so the second is the best a system in which input is coupled to output so that a small increase in input is magnified this is what happened exactly in the entire story some minor glitches minor errors led to some uh, major mishaps similarly positive feedback also something minor in terms of positivity will lead to something positive uh, in larger proportions am i clear neha that's why i uh, made you understand uh, you know the structure the flow of the ideas so always remember mantra is 
flow with the ideas presented take your time after reading first paragraph use scrap paper write down the ideas presented in the individual paragraphs and then try to correlate or envisage the bigger picture so am i clear guys uh, last uh, 59th question based on this which of the following phrases reflect the theme of the passage let's read one choice each choice one by one ambition is part to the success fine this we all agree persistence is the vehicle you arrive in it is absolutely fine last paragraph he says that keep on trying until unless sometimes if we are lucky then uh, we can succeed even but the passage this particular choice has missed the mistake part the error parts how they they, they magnify and uh, can uh, you know result into something major trouble and similarly same goes for even positive things also how they can even uh, magnify themselves and uh, bring us something positive so this is half correct most of you are guys most of the guys you are correct prashant correct Pra prahat correct soma correct so stitch in time saves nine so nowhere it is mentioned that uh, last minute efforts were taken uh, by the operators and the uh, accident uh, the mishap was saved second rejected if you fail to plan you plan a plan to fail seems to be very philosophical but nowhere it is mentioned that planning was done initially and something didn't went uh, didn't go according to the plan and therefore mishap occur occurred it said that usually sometimes the things are so minor that we neglect we ignore them we are not able to see them judge them fourth also rejected so look at the essence of the third option a butterfly flaps its wings in brazil we get hurricane flapping magnified to hurricane amplified to hurricane so magnification positive or negative feedback so again this choice has captured the theme or the essence of the passage so third is the best am i clear am i clear guys so shall we move ahead okay let's see what uh, we have next now uh, here we have picked up uh, this uh, odd one out style question read this question again so i think the question talks about something to do with security given to monetary security given to women yes the man snowball effect is uh, something uh, done at a very very smaller scale get magnified into something bigger yeah naman i know the snowball effect is something same something minor will lead to something major it gets accumulated on its way and that is called a snowball effect so uh, what do you think that answer to this is 60 second i think first yes i think you all got this question correct again i would say that you guys are born genius Sixty second in the first because first is an example. North as well as South is saying that other three are very general. We're talking about mother's pension etc. And this is sixty second. He has given example. Okay, Neha. Moving on to next. Again, I picked up this passage. Very interesting passage. Very interesting. Good read. I would say. It talks about very simple unicellular microorganism. How it performs in a very very complex. environment how it adjusts how it adjusts uh, you know itself in a very very complex environment so what what is your take about this paragraph guys rc moderate easy difficult to understand or the passage was easy and question based on this passage were a little tricky yeah i would say that moderate in terms of the second because a little inferential also little inferential So take your time. Just rush through this. Take five minutes, not five but three minutes. Just try to recall the stuff even.
so dinesh has joined the session hi dinesh very good afternoon how was your day dinesh am i audible so where are you from probably france greece so where are you from you are our online student you are from chandigarh and you have registered yourself online so you are not a regular student we can so dinesh uh, take your time read this passage so harshdeep has left the session must have received the call from a very special friend some friends are very special and they are called fervory friends okay uh, let's move on to the question so uh, what is the passage uh, is trying okay harshdeep you have joined the session you have finished the task okay uh, coming on to this uh, question itself uh through this passage what is the message that uh, this organism is trying to send across to human beings homo sapiens in the passage nothing to worry about naman so read this question through this passage what a message has been delivered by this microorganism to us let's read the second choice recycle to save the globe nowhere it is mentioned that microorganism was trying to recycle the stuff rejected plan for control this is only 30% correct he was trying to microorganism was first of all uh, to control over the environment and finally succeeded in whatever it was trying to do to be effective to be efficient yes it is desired but in order to be effective to be efficient you need to build network as built by the microorganism here first of all you need to understand and you need to send signal across other comrades friends also so that you can build your network otherwise if the communication is broken you will not be able to form your network so that is a message uh, uh, neha uh, this is uh, naman this is half true to be effective to be efficient under what circumstances in order to be effective efficient because throughout the passage if i go back to the passage you will find that yes the author has beautifully explained the uh, procedure the entire procedure operation proce operational procedure with help of which this mold this slime was able to overcome the barriers hurdles and finally succeed in doing whatever the task was right in front of this microorganism so it is it is it is about micro uh, networking and sending signal across and to develop this strong network in order to understand the environment around and it is said that uh, without even a central system any central nervous system that is where intelligence lies so if i read the last uh, few lines just reading just to make you understand this and it is this continuous just focus on the word synchronous oscillation within the cells that allows it to form a quite complex understanding the understanding is because of synchronous oscillation means networking cooperation between various other microorganisms or cells around but without any large scale control center that is where its intelligence lies so crack says that it's able to form network cooperate and that is a mantra uh, followed by this microorganism therefore the best option i'm not saying fourth is entirely wrong but is again half true so either we cooperate or perish so that is a mantra the you know message sent across am i clear guys yes naman there is nothing about uh, perish had the network not been set by this microorganism it would not have uh, the microorganism would not have been able to survive in this 
difficult environment because during the experiment some cold waves were also thrown and some other uh, hurdles were also set in to check the intelligence whether now what uh, this microorganism will do so otherwise it would have perished that is what we mean by perished so prashant is playing joining joining living living prashant i think there's some uh, technical so uh, you are saying we are always taught not to make us our own conclusion while choosing the answers yes um, generally i t t in, uh, tell uh, tell uh, the, my students in my classes that we are not supposed to bring anything from outside so it is about survival so a uh, question is read the question carefully had the question been give suitable title fourth would have been the best it is the message sent across to homo sapiens by this organism microorganism the message put across is not about the title had the question been title you know uh, fourth would have been the best am i clear naman read the question also Uh, okay, uh, 74. Based on your understanding of the passage, solve the analogy question. Now this is a little tricky. Sometimes uh, we need to think extra. So it is say that xylem polycephalum is to human beings. Now the entire passage revolves around intelligence shown by this microorganism. So something to do with intelligence. Now here intelligence. If I compare int intelligence. Uh, in the uh, in this microorganism versus human beings in human being the intelligence is central and in uh, this xylem sy xylem polycephalum the cent intelligence is not central it is actually distributed so there is a relation based on intelligence distribution here that's why answer to this question was fourth ape is to man so how come you are saying that ape is uh yes prashant uh, you picked up uh, one because uh, you think that ape primitive man modern xylem uh for xylem polycephalum primitive human beings modern that's why uh, what's this logic you picked up this but uh, in spite of this uh, complexity and uh, in spite of being simplicity uh, in the structural uh, of, uh, structure of this poly this microorganism this microorganism was able to perform very very complex tasks so everything boils down to intelligence the passage also focus on intelligence shown by this in order to overcome the hurdles so a piece to man intelligence is fine is distributed so we need to see whenever we ask Out of the context question, sometimes after reading, let's say after while reading this question, you must have felt that uh, you know the question is a little out of context. Nowhere it is mentioned that human beings and etc. etc. What is the analogy between uh, this microorganism versus human beings? The point is that we need to come back to the essence of the passage, central idea, and the main focus crux of the passage. So this would help us in answering these questions better. Okay, so next question which I picked up is. is about uh, summary of the paragraph we have to identify the appropriate summary of the paragraph focus on the keywords terrorism is about demonstrating telling us that to compulsively to a civilian population that our government isn't really in charge is not right second keyword it can't it ca it cannot keep its promises to protect us terrorism is deceptive very strong keyword far beyond its direct harm because of it's challenge to our faith in social order again challenging our faith making the ordinary life possible the idea that laws rules etc we have come up to live by real significance now the last line we are thrust into an existential play existential means existing right in front of our eyes a debilitating means weakening sense of uncertainty what is the outcome of this fear and powerlessness come over us so terrorism exactly directly it does uh, harm us directly also but indirect harmful effects are more 
you know dangerous then uh, direct harms so this is the idea actually okay uh, taking about uh, neha uh, i think who has neha you asked uh, second why second is a little weak in comparison to the right answer option second says terrorism is a powerful agent of chaos that turns existing power structures anachronistic means chaotic lawlessness lawless in this context so uh, it says that uh, this choice has only taken care of power structures the question also talks about how it impacts common population common man so this particular point is missing got got it neha yes neha okay fine so we need to take into account uh, because how it affects us is a major uh, concern shown by this paragraph it make us it makes us believe that even government is nothing it is powerless so again talking about primarily talking about the common population so we need to take into account so summary means we need to pick up the major idea terrorism is an intimidating force so we have uh, summed up this uh, debilitating sense fear etc intimidating force that disrupts power and impact underpinning of normal life normal life means whatever faith whatever faith we have believe in laws rules etc they all are thrown up out of the way thrown out of the way or gear Okay, Naman, you are asking first. Terrorism is a destructive, destructive force that challenges the ability of society to deal with it. Unrest. So, what is the meaning? What kind of unrest is being shown here? So, the uh, the weakest word was here, unrest. So, what kind of unrest are we talking about? What kind of unrest? And this powerlessness is talking about where that we feel helpless. not unrest or uncomfortable it is about powerlessness powerlessness means we are not able to control the situation it is not unrest unrest is something to do with your state of mind and this is what we uh, feel around us what we see actually it is a kind of handicap we feel am i clear naman so unrest is not exactly first of all we are not dealing with any kind of unrest in general usually we are just leading our everyone is leading his or her normal life so whenever these incident terrorism actually uh, uh, throw this normal life out of gear it is not any kind of unrest being propagated by terrorism it is the handicap fear etc so okay let's move on to this 78th question rush through this i'll pick up the few keywords we'll be able to answer straight away if you have already answered this question correct then uh, probably we can move ahead yes guys amresh kanab dinesh neha let's see how many students are there Okay, Neha, take your time. Rest of you guys also just rush through. Okay, now my turn to uh, read this question out. Living as we do in troubling times, we look to the writers to reflect the temper, the mood, attitude. The essential thing is freedom. Our uh, people cannot. Freedom is very important here, as per the question. And uh, people cannot be great or fulfilled without it. It refers to again freedom. A literature similarly cannot be great without it either. The basic prerequisite of a literature is freedom. Again, he has emphasized too much on freedom. At the first, freedom is mental freedom. for it is possible to be free in the world and unfree in your head it's uh, because it is uh, you know quite a possibility that uh, sometimes we are physically free but not mentally 
The most striking thing about the great literature is the strength of freedom that flows through its pages. Yet, now the twist is there. Anomaly means away from the normal. Anomaly of perception often bought, brought to black and African writers. They tend to consider only important for their subjects. Because whenever, as per the question says that whenever you think of any black or African writer, uh, they are known for their subjects, whatever the subjects they pick up to write about. We read Flambert for beauty, Joyce for innovation, Virginia Woolf for her poetry, etc. But means the black writer will not uh, pick up, uh, you know, positive or negative subjects or vice versa or mix of all these areas. But on the other hand, they will restrict themselves to few areas, slavery, colonialism, poverty, civil wars, imprisonment, female circumcision. In short, the subjects that reflect the troubles of African and black people as perceived by the rest of the world. So they are, they are restricted to, they are known for these areas only whenever they write. So we need to take this, this into account that passage focused on means on the one hand we are talking about the freedom on the other hand we are saying that people uh, recall these black writers whenever uh, these subjects are uh, being highlighted otherwise and they are made to write only these areas the last line the black and african writer is expected means we are putting some sort of restriction on them means we are taking away their freedom that is what the gist of the passage is uh, if you have understood this this part, then probably uh, it would be easier for us to uh, pick up the right choice. So second is uh, not comparing. We are not comparing their excellence. Probably uh, uh, they can write on these subjects in a very, very excellent way, better way than even uh, white writers. But point is that uh, we are talking about the freedom in general and why and how come these black writers, African writers are not free uh, mentally and they are subjected to a certain restriction as perceived by the rest of the world that uh, you are supposed to write only these lines, similar lines, etc. not supposed to write anything else other than what you feel, what you experience in your countries. So that is what, so we need to uh, reject second. Neha, you picked up first. Black African right constantly maligned. So who says that they are maligned? The, there is no mention they are maligned. Means he is saying that with respect to the freedom, to the literature, to the rest of the writers, rest of the world, they are not uh, you know, uh, made free. They are not, uh, the freedom is not equally given to these writers even. So they are not maligned. Maligned means uh, to defame. It's a very strong word. Very strong word. So first and two, that, that's why uh, rejected. Now we are left with third and fourth. So third seems to be very uh, tricky till first half. It's a black and Af black and African writers when compared to other great literature find themselves to be more ready to their subjects. Agreed. Till this, it is absolutely fine. This subsequently leads to the form of literature which is far more structured and constrictive. There is no mention that uh, the structure would be far more, uh, you know, the writing would be uh, far more structured or constrictive. Structured is uh, not not mentioned here. Constructive, fine. Yeah, Neha. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, I forgot to pick, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, I was not audible earlier. So I'll again repeat uh, what I told you, uh, you know, uh, these uh, five minutes, three or four minutes. Now, yeah, uh, now am I, am I audible, guys? I just forgot to press this uh, CCL. Uh, button uh, without which you'll not be able to hear me okay uh, so guys uh, why first is wrong uh, one of you asked yes first is wrong because uh, it says that uh, these writers are constantly maligned by the world of literature so there's no mention of in this passage that they are maligned uh, we are talking about with respect to freedom uh, white writers are more free to write uh, than black uh, african writers because uh, generally people think that they are supposed to write, they should write only on few subjects, whatever they felt, whatever they are feeling, whatever they see around them. So that is uh, the first is rejected. Second is uh, they are constantly compared, it's fine, they do not find themselves at par. Again, why we have to reject second choice? Because uh, there is no mention that we are drawing comparison. We are drawing comparison only one parameter that is freedom. And we cannot say they are not at par with white writers. Probably uh, they can write on these subjects 
better than white writers so second also rejected not summarizing this third uh, black african red compared to great literature find themselves to more ready to their subjects this is fine till here it is fine third choice and this subsequently leads to the form of literature which is far more structured now uh, there is no mention that uh, this, uh, this this kind of literature is far more structured how can we make out how can we summarize there is no mention there is no hint of this so this is wrong it is fine constructive so that's why fourth black african writers found bound to they are bound to by the rest of the world the way we perceive the perception is about uh, about these writers is this only defined by the subjects only uh, because last line the black african writers are expected to write about certain things and if they do not they are seen as irrelevant means we think that they are supposed to write only on these lines these topics that's why so work being desired along certain lines alone so am i clear guys why 78 fourth is the best choice 2 and 4 uh, second and fourth prashant you are asking uh, so uh, the the i told you earlier they do not find themselves to be at par with them at par with them in with respect to what had the freedom been mentioned here this would again would have been very very strong choice so at par with respect to the writing with respect to the quality of writing what so at par so this uh, point uh, this word is not mentioned here the choice has missed this word uh, am i clear prashant neha am i clear i just explained why second is not entirely wrong but uh, weak not appropriate less appropriate okay uh, let's uh, yes neha your question complete your question complete your typing second one is wrong because it is say that they do not find black writers do not find them, themselves to be at par with them so in what respect they do not find themselves at par with it uh, is it with respect to writing quality what kind of and even uh, there is no mention that black and african writers are complaining about this restriction or uh, freedom being not given to them there's no hint of this that's why it's wrong okay shall i move ahead uh, neha okay fine now it is again about summary i think today we are going to specialize about summary based questions just rush through i'll just uh, tell you one keyword and you'll be able to crack the answer Yes, guys. If you have gone through, it says that according to Daniel, this latest book, original uh, organized mind, replying to text mails, etc., etc., uh, we uh, get a shot of dopamine. Dopamine is uh, one of a chemical supposed to uh, make us happy, straight to the brain, which make us uh, makes us feel good. Uh, that cute sneezing panda takes our mind off our troubles and make us feel connected. Levitin say, Levitin says. Uh, we also feel as if we are accomplishing something accomplishing something every time focus on this where i am moving my cursor here if you can see on your screen not only do we have to be productive at work again we have to be productive so we also need to be sufficiently productive in our virtual lives also nobody wants to feel uh, nobody wants to feel irrelevant but there is cost to this constant juggling act means between virtual and real world stress fine we are really impressed by this stress word and we pick up one of the wrong choices here and cognitive impairment can result constant distraction levitin says fine stress is one of the uh, outcomes of this juggling fine but uh, in the passage he has mentioned that why we go for all these and why we do we indulge uh, in all these kind of activities because we feel that we have to be productive and by doing this we can be uh, productive and the sense of achievement is also there so let's pick up one choice uh, each choice one by one social networking though is that is positive fine agreed can lead to unwarranted uh, unwarranted uh, consequences such as stress this is half true 50% correct we have summarized only 50% yes soma 3 it is 3 because uh, it has taken into account 
uh, the achievement also we need to be productive the passage say that why we do uh, all these because we feel that we have to be productive so third uh, has summed up this beautifully an increasingly digitally connected life can have its perils means dangers involved agreed has taken care of stress etc even though it may not it may provide some work contentment and sense of achievement it may but not always because these are perception that by doing so we feel that we are productive why not for okay digital lives which seemingly ease our work routines there is no mention that it has you know uh, easing our work routines etc so first half itself is little weak here and there provide us with enhanced social connectivity this is fine actually creating stress in our life but again we have missed the achievement the productive part that's why fourth is weak in comparison to third choice have i question, answered your question neha okay let's see what we have very big mini rc style para jumping question so what's your take about this question guys so did you get this question correct attempt so did you attempt this question soma got this incorrect so incorrect amresh you also got this question incorrect so uh, don't you try all these questions or so, try to solve the entire paper after you take this test because i told in my earlier session also uh, make this routine that after you take your exam any paper any mock test etc take the print out and solve the question just for the sake of solving and to understanding or getting deep into the examiner psyche and making your mind familiar with all these so called uh, unstructured very difficult questions work uh, neha you are asking workshop regarding what you have to specify the topic also in because we have got so many workshops on different sessions uh, different topics neha uh, uh, we shall be uh, launching uh, these workshops soon and i'll be able to attend yeah we'll start with rc then comes grammar after that we have sentence correction we go in order likewise we have in our books grammar would be there so i think you are little terrified by the grammar don't worry it covers only uh, it has only two to three question based this topic has focus on rcs sr it has got three seven question approximately and critical reasoning that you will find in our pack to uh, uh, bullseye books don't worry about the grammar we shall be taking up this session again we shall be taking um, revising the entire grammar workshop also doubt session also we have got so many things so guys read all the sentences and try to figure out the question answer to this question so what do you think the opener would be it talks about the story talks about rural crisis and how it is posing major threat to countries other countries people living in other countries countries relying on uh, ruble and the russian themselves so yes opener has to be b now we just need to check b a is fine or b e is fine after b a will come uh, e will come because uh, in e uh, we have uh, he has further the author has given the one more evidence to highlight the uh, threat involved or the problems involved in this entire goof up so it is b e yeah second prashant absolutely fine second is the right answer whenever you are confident that, that you, you have uh, found this either closure or opener so make sure that you reject rest of the choices and focus on the remaining one or two and uh, try to figure out the mandatory pair then we'll be able to solve the question 
now again cd again uh, is a mandatory pair uh, this we find in only two choices first and second so answer uh, uh, third also but since b uh, is an opener therefore i have rejected fourth so we are left with only first and second only Uh, see, uh, 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 Soma, uh, it, in the B uh, sentence, which is an opener, uh, Russia's ruble crisis posing major threat to countries along its southern fringe border, whose economies rely heavily on billions of dollars shipped home every year by their own citizens working within Russia. Now, E says, uh, do we know the meaning of uh, remittances sent? Yeah, uh, ruble can be linked, uh, Prashant, but 50%, uh, uh, I'm talking about the understanding. Other than keyword, 50% drop in the ruble has not only decimated, means destroyed the value of remittances, means the money is sent uh, from uh, this one country to uh, another country. That's why, uh, after B, E will come. Have I answered your question, Soma? Yes or no, Soma? Okay. Yes, guys, uh, uh, let me, uh, Pranjal, Praveen, Prashant, Kanav, Amresh, are you all there? Are you listening whatever we are discussing? It seems as, as if uh, me, Prashant, Amresh, Soma and these few, few people are playing questions, questions, answer, answers. What about you guys? Are you all there? Let's press yes once. Kanav, Dinesh. Okay, so last very, very difficult passage, I would say, and this is kind of a passage when we read these kind of passages, we get into spiritual enlightenment. We feel that what is there in, what is there in this world, everything is an illusion. There is nothing in this world. And after reading this passage, if you are asked, dear, do you have any desire left in you? Your answer would be, cannot be determined. Am I clear? About describing this passage I think description is appropriate uh, fitting well so what you have to say about this passage guys rush through and this is probably this is deliberately we do these kind of tricks because we know that uh, this this is the last lap of any paper in 90 second 90 onwards question and probably the candidate uh, uh, would be very tired would be feeling very tired after uh, reaching here so generally we keep uh, this difficult passage in the last of the paper why because uh, we want to check whether uh, you know, uh, he'll be able to handle this stress and in very very stressful situation like this how you being a manager in future would be able to handle this this is deliberately done. It's not uh, that by accident or some chance occurrence is there that we fit this passage here. Very thoughtful move. Sometimes I discuss my trade secrets also. So it talks about modernity and uh, that we are obsessed by this and uh, we are talking about the changes happening and some new theories would uh, come into foreplay rejecting uh, old ones and making the old ones futile so he has given for example and there is uh, no doubt there are benefits uh, regarding new theories or by the new theories benefits generally uh, definitely uh, are there but point is it also need these new theories also uh, you know give rise to some sort of insecurity mystery, falsifiability, etc, etc. For example, he has given the exam, uh, this last line example, he has given for instance, Einstein theories about curvature of space and motion at a quantum level provide new knowledge and generates new unknowns. So he is no doubt supporting new developments, new theories, but at the same time, he is also saying that in the aftermath of new theories or the consequences, the terrible consequences that we have to face, some sort of uh, mysteries uh, would come into picture because of these new theories. Second paragraph, since every new theory destabilizes as much as solidifies, it destabilizes also. Uh, there will be collective frenzy means madness to generate knowledge creates at same time mounting less of utility, tension, 
looking for catharsis what is this moment a moment in which we could feel if only for an instant for an instant look at the keywords because i'll be picking up one question based on these keywords for an instant we feel that that we know something for sure amid all this in contemporary culture now he has given this now how big data uh, some you know uh, new baby um, in the picture a uh, big data promises this relief now he is not at all in favor complete favor of is looking this in a very very doubtful way that likewise other new theories uh, give us only instant happiness uh, this is also this also big data promises this relief only instant ephemeral short lived transient so at this at the names of the big data is about data collection of data conjunction of data at one place and this how this data can revolutionize the knowledge he has given revolution in the knowledge where i am moving my cursor under the inverted commas means revolution is not at all uh, happy with this is not at all he doesn't believe that it will bring something revolution that complete revolution will bring uh, this data can bring so phrase thrown around by startups and mass market etc etc third paragraph as with the similar inferential lines now inferential uh, note down this word because uh, one question has been framed inferential means your ability to read something uh, in between the lines now some sciences are also inferential by nature psychology because there you need to read in between the lines similarly you need to get into the brain of a person and pop neuroscience popular neurosciences big data can used to give chosen hypothesis a veneer layer of science it is only layer of science not the deep science and unearned authority of numbers the data is big enough to entertain any story as per the as the, as one of the claims made by these data people so people have started investing money also is given the example of twitter the again very strong word this second last paragraph the rational is fantasy fantasy is what you believe what you uh, you are illuminated by illusion by uh, something unreal again he has put right under the comma so all in all he is not a big supporter of big data as claimed by big data people advent supporters of big data so he is little doubtful about the claims made because he has given that how come any new science or new entrant would pose will create mysteries also if you have understood this a little so probably we can answer it can be inferred from the passage that author is vocal supporter he is strictly no no therefore rejected trenchant critic trenchant is severe so he is not severely criticizing no doubt he has uh, highlighted a little also about this how come this is going to help social sciences like just like physics critical evaluator critical evaluator is very seems to be very close but critical evaluator may uh, in critical uh, evaluation we take into account positives as well as uh, negatives so he has more or less focus on negatives not on positives so he is doubtful about he is just observing the claims made by big data people about big data relevancy of big data etc also going to is just skeptical that's why he's put fantasy right revolutionize etc under the comma am i clear guys are you all there listening okay uh, so a limit sadness shown by the author grief of the author the passage is 91st answer to this question the keyword is it only obscures third option 91st answer is third monetary is focused on misleading path of generating more knowledge and uh, it it thinks that big data people or such you know, new knowledge will always people who are supporting new knowledge will think that they have generated something new but it gen, at the same time along it generates strangeness obscures therefore third i'm just taking up the last question guys thank you for showing patience the parallel between big data and pop neuroscience is both are coincidental no mention of this both science include conjectures and presumptions we don't know now can you guess the answer because these sciences are inferential by nature therefore if you know the meaning of inference yes fourth both sciences involve reading between the lines so the time is up for this session so see you next time around take your time stay focused stay calm and uh, i shall be taking up bull mock eight analysis next time 
but make sure that you solve each and every question by yourself just to get familiar with all these tricks we play am i clear guys time has come to wind up all the best just waiting for i am called i am say nothing less than i am say or straight way to harvard see you guys bye